Me. Fred? Um, Fred Townsend, town solicitor. Marty Tarr, Board of Election. Elaine Bull, Board of Election. Kay Sullivan, Elections Judge. Ellen Dana, her volunteer in the absentee voting. Susan Trencher, Tallier with the absentee voting. Okay. Oh, good. Um, we have another person. Mm -hmm. um, you should be sitting up here. Okay, this is roll call, so just we need you just to give you your name and official title. You have to share. At the polls. Sarah Reed? No. Your name and your, you just put in, in the microphone right there. Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Sally Reed. I'm an inspector. Okay, thank you, Sally. Um, all right, uh, I think that we should, uh, we all are aware, and I want to say that this process, I truly believe that democracy is me messy, but it, I believe in it, and asking for a recount when the vote is so tight is absolutely acceptable, and um, the um, town attorney will uh, tell you, talk about the law if we need to talk about the law, but I don't think uh, that, would you just kind of speak on that issue? Sure, um, thank you. Uh, once again, Dewey Beach is cutting new ground and, and creating new paths, and uh, there's not a lot of experience on this, uh, in this area, so um, I would ask for everyone to uh, just take that into consideration. I think you're gonna find that the town will be uh, entirely open with information required to satisfy everyone's questions about how this is going to work and what information may be relevant to anyone's concerns going forward. Uh, I would just ask for your patience as we work through this as quickly as we can. As far as um, the recount process is concerned, um, it's been our determination that it has automatically been triggered by the code. Um, the code tells us uh, at 75.50, I'm sorry, um, well, it's chapter 75 of Title 15 that when the disparity between uh, the uh, votes tallied by any individual is less than one, one half percent of the, someone whose uh, votes tallied sufficient to be elected, then uh, that automatically triggers a uh, recount. So that recount process, I believe, is going to take place this afternoon. We will, uh, we're gonna get to that. Mm -hmm. um, so that will automatically take place. Now, what does that mean? This, the state doesn't do anything um, new in terms of their involvement in the election. They're, they're done. They, they are uh, producing information for us and they are um, supplying that information to us. Under the code, we would typically um, uh, be certifying the election results within 48 hours. We can't do that uh, in this instance because of the duty to, to perform a recount. So um, I think our chairwoman wants to talk about the recount process at either a later stage or, or wants to handle that. Okay, and to be clear that this was uh, Phil Rowe who provided us a letter today, uh, but he also let us know yesterday uh, that he wanted to recount. Uh, you'll notice the first paragraph, and this might have to be answered later, requesting a com complete manual recount of in-person machine votes and absentee votes. We actually have, Fred, this is the certified, which if normally, um, just the background in Dewey, I think there was one other time where there was a very close race, Beverly, um, that <coughs> Winkler or something that was very close, and and that was a very like less even supposedly less votes but he, they did not and this does not at all it's your privilege to ask for a recount he did not ask for a recount mm -hmm. yes yes mm -hmm. it, but he but they didn't do it back in those days okay they he just didn't do it so this is the first time we're actually doing it so that's why we're just trying to get up to speed with all the regulations because 
But anyway, so but the, the, the machine, okay, which is the, um, the certified, um, um, uh, let me get back to, so don't say, I'm sorry, I asked something of her because she was involved, but please don't ask questions because uh, I'm tired mm -hmm. and I'll get off track. Mm -hmm. um, but um, anyway, so um, how the process has worked in this municipality, this small little town before, is that the announcement happens the night of. It's not certified until we get the actual ballots back from the, the um, um, the state or the county. Mm -hmm. The election board certifies the absentees and the absentees, you actually had challengers there. Um, Paul had challengers. The other candidates did not have challengers at the absentee ballot counting. Um, so after the talliers, you were, but yeah, but you were for Roe, weren't you a challenger for, yeah, that's what I said. Mm -hmm. the, please don't speak from the audience, but the challengers, the, the candidates that had challengers were Roe and Bauer. Okay, so um, the um, actual talliers <coughs> were, and uh, my husband actually was a tallier. Mm -hmm. the, uh, how it works is it's on a piece of paper and it's a stick count because it's, it's archaic, it's the process that it's supposed to be, and the uh, Board of uh, Elections reads out the names and they do 10 at a time. They open up the ballots. They do not look at the names on the ballot, on the envelopes. They turn them over so you can't see them. And then they stack them in piles of 10. Then sitting across from each other or on other side so they can't uh, see what's going on, uh, the talliers, uh, the Board of Elections says, uh, you know, what, I'm just hypothetically, um, Bauer, Cook, Redifer, Rowe. They only can vote for three, obviously. And they do that and they tally it. And I can give you an example. Well, you'll get all of this stuff anyway later. And then um, Sally, Susan. Susan, I get Sally and Susan, sorry, mix up. Sa Susan would say, well, Rick would say, 10 for Ro Bauer, 10 for Cook, 10 for Redifer. 10 for row, and they'd say agree. So they would hear that at the same time. Then after that, um, if if for some reason Rick said nine, and uh, Susan said, mm, they had to strike it out and take it and read them out again. And that's how the process works. After that's done, and the, the challengers that are in the audience, there can only be one challenger, and this will be the same process today that hopefully that we can schedule for today. My husband has stayed from work, you all owe him money, and me, <laughs> down to tally again. And if you can you work on the tally again today? Okay, so, and I can be, Gloria's not available, but I can be there to read out with you. I can do today. Okay, today. So if we can vote on today, can you be there, Ellen, to oversee it? And Ellen was there also. Uh, in past, she had been a tallier, and she um, was making sure that it was right as well, correct, the number. So the number was being not only checked by any challengers that wanted to do a check it, but it was also being done by the talliers, and we had Ellen here. And um, I'd like you very much to participate as well, because you were a judge, at, to be there today, if you can. So we'll just agree upon a time. Uh, how that works is it's just the ballots. We take that box, we stack them, and we do it exactly the way we did it on Saturday, and just recertify them. Um, uh, is can we come up with a time that works for all of us? Could we do this at? Because at the, that time, I'd also like to have a list of um, some of the things that I thought that the candidates that that are challenging might want, and is a list of um, the voters. We will provide a list of voters when you're sitting there. We will provide um, the copy of the last tally. Um, so, because we want to be totally transparent, um, the, pa the tally that was certified, so you will have that. Um, and then, what else do you need? So, da -da -da, okay, da -da. And we will also, we will give out and hand out right now, everybody see this? This is the certified um, uh, results from the S Sussex County. In his request, he's asking for us to hand I don't know what I haven't seen this yet. Just look at that first paragraph. Mm -hmm. So here's the certified 
um, is you want to open it. <coughs> we have and on that process we've already this is K and the inspector have already certified the original um, well, the tapes from the machines. And so that's the reason we're able to announce the election. We've always announced the election because everybody goes, what's happening? Mm -hmm. And so we announce the election, but the official results are not until 48 hours afterwards. And we, did you get this? <clears throat> and, um, and this would be the official results. It gives you all the information you need. Yeah, you guys can have that. No, no problem. Okay, um, as far as the question we have from the candidate, and this was a question that had come up that uh, from candidate uh, Philip Rowe, that he wanted to also have uh, to manually recount. And you all are not, will manually recount, but the candidate does not get to manually recount it, as you probably recognize that. The same process happens. You will have the Board of Election recount it with your challengers there. Is that understood by everyone? Okay. Um, as far as getting the actual ballots from the machine, I don't know if you want, if you, what's, what's the process there? The actual ballots from the machine? Uh, well, they can scan and send over scanned copy of the scan. I think they have scanned copies of the ballots, but I don't know if that's something that the... Of individual ballots? No, of individual ballots. I believe the state has individual scanned copies. Is that right? Each voter put in a ballot, and the ballot showed who they voted for. Once they pressed the final vote button, mm -hmm. it went into a storage bin. Mm -hmm. So the county has stored those ballots. They can be and touched. for them to recount from what the man told us, they re they rescan those into another scanner, which comes out with numbers like this. And I would say, maybe their certified copy is that rescan. That is what that is. Yeah, that's a certified copy. As you can see, when you look at that, there were no rejects, but there were people, or like the numbers that people were interested in. You have the total ballots ca ballots cast. You have. Um, under votes, if you want to know what that means, is people that didn't vote for all three choices. Some people just voted for one of you, some people voted for three, some people voted for two. So you, this is, you know, the how many votes cast. It doesn't mean how many voters. It means how many votes cast and the under votes of 107, 172. People that did not vote for any of the people that were given, they were given a choice and they could have. If I could, um, I think this does represent the um, state's final act with respect to the recount requirement. So they have, I believe they've run, they've done everything that they can do and, and by supplying this, they're done. Now, you'll notice, I was told to look for this, it, there's a title on the right-hand side of the page that these are unofficial results, but they are not in any sense unofficial. These, they're unofficial to the extent that we haven't certified the election results yet, but uh, the state's reading of the machine votes is done, and they they don't they're not required to do anything more by virtue of this recount requirement. Okay, so um, I think that it, at this time, um, I would like to give anybody in the audience an opportunity to ask a question if it's relevant to the recounts. Um, and if I can't answer it, understanding I'm not a lawyer, um, that I'm going to throw it to Fred. Mm -hmm. And um, so would anyone ha does anyone have a question? <clears throat> okay, Philip, I'm right on up. Hi, Philip Rowe, candidate still hanging in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, uh, the in-person ballots reflected Mr. Bauer as a resident. The absentee ballots represented him as a non-resident. I would ask him to choose which of those votes he wants, either the <laughs> resident votes or the non-resident votes. If, if there isn't some resolution to how and why he got to list himself most favorably with non-residents, 
uh, by absentee and most favor favorably with residents as as a resident, I'm going to have to file an injunction. Can you sp repeat what you just said about the which one is which that you are? Complaining? Well, I, what I'm saying is, in the absentee ballots, Mr. Bauer was listed as a non-resident. Mm -hmm. In the in-person ballot, which you show here, he's listed as a resident. You can't mm -hmm. be listed both ways. People are thrown out of office all the time for for fraudulent residency in well, municipal okay. offices. Well, well, one one thing I will ask um, is, I don't think Mr. Bauer had much to do no. with how those ballots are reflected. So there, there's nothing, um, there's no, I would just caution you against making any reference to any inappropriate activity on, on his well, part. Well, fraud can be conscious or unconscious, so I'm not saying that no, it's I, conscious fraud. I, I don't know yet. But. I, I, think that, I think that election officials established the, um, the ballots and how they were labeled. In, in the machine. Um, in the machine. In the machine, and and the I did not see that how he was labeled in the machine. In the machine, was he resident? He was a resident. It's on here. It's okay. on the form. You just um, uh, the because I I will uh, I will take. I'm not going to say the word responsibility, because, because but I am going to say this. It's a misrepresentation. I would say this. Okay, that in fact the if the, in the absentee that it was went out that said uh, that he was a non-resident that and I'm going to have Beverly stand up too because this is the first time and speak to this. It was not as something that he sent to us. It was our mistake. It was a clerical mistake. But he's on not our a part. resident. What you're but you're saying he's not a resident. Correct. Okay. His domicile, is in, his domicile is in Wilmington. If you read the letter, it gives you a lot of details about that. But I, I mean, there's tons more. I but just I can't. As far letter. as residency, but, but you're not, not saying he's not eligible as a candidate. That's not. Your no, point. I'm right. saying that as a candidate, you fill out a form to file that you're required to be absolutely truthful on, right. and you have to state whether you're a resident or not. And, and, Mr. and whether whether you, someone made a mistake or not. It could lead voters to believe in him more or less favorably based on their own status or based on whether they wanted him to be the mayor, which he could be as a resident, but could not be as a non-resident. So it's not a fair election, period. Regardless so, of so, how it happened, it's not a fair election. So Mr. At the Rowe, very least, there should be a, a, a runoff. Mr. Rowe, um, I'm, I'm going to look at your letter very carefully, and I've heard your remarks to that effect. I think that's a, that's a question for um, uh, another day. Right. Another day might be very soon. Um, sure. Uh, based on this, I think uh, you're advancing the claim that you lodged uh, with your email on Saturday, I guess it was, or Sunday. Right. So um, we'll be looking at this very okay. closely, and I, and I will be communicating with you and others. Great. Um, the, the, this board uh, has jurisdiction to hear appeals of that type, but but for purposes of today's meeting, and we will talk a little bit about that before we uh, adjourn or recess into this next process. The only thing I would say is it's just a fact you cannot run as both a resident and a non-resident. And that's right, what happened I, I want to make something, I want to ask you something sure. real, to have real clarity on this. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that you believe that Mr. Bauer misrepresented himself intentionally? No, I'm not saying that. I'm okay. saying he was misrepresented. And it's a material misrepresentation because there's actually two classes of commissioners. There's resident and non-resident. They enjoy different statuses. People vote in some ways along those lines based on what they believe or don't believe. And I'm saying when you run a candidate in both ways, I mean, it just simply can't stand. You but, can't run a candidate as a non-resident mm -hmm. on one side of the house and then as a resident on the other and call it a fair election, period. Okay, so, <laughs> Mr. Rowe, just, just to be clear, I thought where you were headed was, where was he shown to be a, or reflected, or? To be clear, he's shown as a resident on the machines and he's shown as a non-resident on the absentee ballots. The, uh, the absentee ballots, he's definitely shown as a non-resident. And he is, in fact, a non-resident. Okay. 
So that All was right. the other aspect that I, um, Beverly, do you have any, because you were, anything to say, okay, I can tell you right now mm -hmm. in front of everybody mm -hmm. that uh, that was a mistake on our pot part. Would you agree, Beverly? I don't know. I wasn't involved in that. <laughs> It's irrelevant his mistake it was. What I did this year after chairing the board for 10 or 12 was back off and act as a mentor and an assistant because I had the ballot saved on my computer from previous years, the format. I added the names of the candidates as they had been two years ago, showing Paul Bauer as a non-resident. I coordinated with Ashley make sure that we had names of candidates exactly as they had wanted them placed on the ballot. I mean, you know, if somebody goes by a nickname, the person usually wants the nickname on the ballot. If somebody goes by a full formal name, they usually want that on the ballot. That's all I did. I know from past years that the county inquires of the town um, for the names of the candidates, and it sends you a sample ballot of what will be on the voting machine. Delaware always lists candidates alphabetically. So that's why we listed them alphabetically on the absentee ballot. I didn't see the, you know, the question from the county, is this an accurate ballot? I was not involved. In mm -hmm. All I can tell you is talk about the past. I can't tell you about the past. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And that's about my involvement, too. And then we had, uh, except assisting the town, which is short on staff, and helping put the absentee ballots together and make sure they were done correctly. So um, that is all there is to that story. And I think that uh, Fred will have to uh, deal with it after we do the recount, if this is, again, an issue that you decide to pursue. Oh, it's an issue I am pursuing. Mm -hmm. I will seek an inju injunction to stop installment if... It's not either a, a new election or you choose which of those votes he gets. <laughs> well, this this group is. It's over my pay grade. Yeah, this. <laughs> but you can't. You can't. You I simply can't run as two different types of candidates. Well, that'll, that'll, election. that'll be, that'll be, that'll that'll be an argument, Mr. Rowe. You'll have an opportunity to make before this group in a in a different setting very soon, and we'll have to talk about that. Sure. As well. uh, okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. So I think. The Chris? Yeah, do you want to ask other? Or oh, other yes. Other? Um, Paul, let Paul go up first. I'm Paul Bauer. Uh, I filed my paperwork as a resident. My driver's license reflects that this is my address here. Uh, two years ago, when I ran, I ran as a non resident. And, you know, the duties that you have to perform as a commissioner here really require you to, to be there. So I'm here. The challenge that I'm not a resident is, uh, you know, again, some more misinformation. It just keeps coming up. There's just no end in sight to this stuff, I guess. Uh, what else should I tell you? Do you want to know how many days I've lived, slept in that uh, bed? Or I do have a house in Wilmington still. I didn't sell it. Uh, I go up every now and then. But I'm here. You know, if, if, if you're around town, you see me. So. The proofs, the proofs, and uh, uh, I think I see most everybody every day. So, okay, thank you, Mr. Bauer. But again, this issue is not going to be settled uh, today. This is a, a separate issue um, that will be settled later, and we'll do the recount. Okay. Gary, did you think you okay? Yeah. Unless you have something. No, else I mean, and, and also in the paper, I also declared myself as a resident as well. So, I don't. The, the, the newspapers carried it, and there's evidence that uh, I was. There's nothing I did wrong on this thing. So. Gary? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, Gary Persinger, Commissioner uh, Dewey Beach. This is really for the town solicitor. Um, I think in the same section of Title 15 that you cited, that may be the first paragraph there, it talks about the um, someone who's, as a result of an election, you can't take office until uh, no fewer than seven days after the election results are certified. Mm -hmm. So my question is, when does that window start? Um, it, it starts once we certify if I understand your question correctly, once we certify the results, which we would have had an obligation to do before the, I think it was 6 o'clock um, today, that would have been our obligation, um, because of the code provision that requires a recount, 
we are going to engage in that process and as soon as that's complete which we anticipate will be today um, then that that window begins to run mm -hmm. Dale you had a question Bill Just to be clear, so that the misdirection you just heard isn't codified anywhere, I don't care whether he's a resident or not a resident. It doesn't matter. I can probably prove he's not a resident if I have to, if that makes a difference. Um, but the issue is you can't run as both, so he needs to pick one. Yeah, I understand, and that'll, again, that'll be a subject that we'll get into um, in the near future. Um, I, all right, so I, this section, if no one else has any questions, we're going to... Could, could I, yes. actually, just one quick thing. Mm -hmm. um, the process today, the recount process, is a public process. However, it's not going to be, it's not going to be run like this one. There won't be any um, public comment. Uh, if anyone wants to observe, they can observe. They are directed not to interfere, not to, um, they, I guess, presumably, we'll, we have to have somebody clear from the room if they insisted on being disruptive during the course of the process. But the recount process is a public process. It's going to be conducted in exactly the same fashion as it was earlier. And uh, the results will be made known. And um, this group will act on those at the first opportunity. And I would assume that, uh, that, and I think that maybe I anticipate what Phil might be asking or Paul might be thinking or the audience is, is that once we certify those, does, does, are they certified even if there is an objection by, um, so they're certified and then there's, does he take, do they take seed and then it changes? How does that work? Yeah, I, I, I believe, um, we will be certifying, this group will be certifying the election results when, they're, when they've completed the recount. However, that doesn't deprive due process of anyone who's objecting to the, to the process itself. So um, they will, oh, the, the certification of the, of the uh, election will not um, bar any complaint of uh, irregularity. No, I mean swearing in. So if, if it's certified but there is a complaint, is a swearing in? The swearing in is it can't be less than seven days from the election, uh, but it can be longer. So, so uh, we're going to be endeavoring to resolve this as quickly as possible, but the swearing in process is not... Can't uh, be delayed. No, it can be delayed. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It can be. That's what can be delayed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Dal. I apologize for changing my mind there. Uh, but it brought up a question. The observers are the only one, the, the legitimate observers from the candidates are the only ones that can speak it uh, or have any chance of speaking at your account. Is that correct? And they, yeah, exactly. Right, and they're it's challengers. Only one the time, the challengers. Mm -hmm. so, challengers, I'm yeah, sorry. So yeah. but every, every candidate including you, because it's a full recount, it's mm -hmm. not just, um, can have an, a, a challenger, but only one at a time, and they can't come up and sit with us, they have to stay in the audience and, and they can speak, can, we have to recognize them. Can the candidates that did not have challengers or observers originally, yes. can they have new ones? Yes, I mean, uh, you just need to provide us today with a piece of, you know, even an email saying who your challengers are, uh, or text, or whatever, or email better, that who your challengers are. Can the candidate be a challenger? I don't know about that. Um, I, I would hope that that wouldn't, yeah, I, I would like not, I would like the candidates not to have a direct role, and I hope everybody can understand that. I think the purpose is that the challenger is not the candidate. Um, so. Um, it's particularly troublesome in the case where a candidate is a sitting official. So uh, I would ask that I think I think the spirit of the of the code is that the challenger is someone other than the um, than someone running for office. Okay. And the challenger does not have to be the challengers that you had before because maybe they're not available. Um, but. Uh, for us, we are going to use the same talliers because 
they're the only ones available. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the uh, the board, we're going to have the judges from uh, that are here, um, all there too, that represented the campaign. So we'll have all of us together. And I do not anticipate, truly do not anticipate any kind of disruption. I really don't. I think it's just, it's a, we're all, it's open book here, you know, you can ask any questions and you can do whatever you want. Pat Wright, former mayor. I had a question about certifying. When you open the envelopes and you have a person's name there, do they absolutely check that these are legitimate voters? I have looked at the voter registration list. People who have sold their properties and died are still listed. Do you make certain that these are legitimate? Thank you for clarifying that. That was a yes on the record. <laughs> I, I, only, yes. I only saw a head nod. I just want the record to show that that was a yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it, do you have anything to say as uh, one of the people who checked the records? No, that's, that's one of the first things we do even before we send out an absentee ballot is we make sure that it's going to a legal voter for the town. Go ahead, Phil. I know what your question is, but come on up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I do. She sat on the front row. <laughs> so, in the spirit of having me having even more fun than you today, I'm having a spinal implant at 2:15. Oh, I don't know what you were going to say. <laughs> yeah, I'd be surprised. Uh, is there any way that this could be done tomorrow morning? No, that cannot happen. Okay, well, I won't be available yeah. for you know, the afternoon. Uh, you, we, I, I'm really, not going to be involved we, in the We really hoped that yeah. just like showing a house, you shouldn't be in it. We wanted your sure, real estate agent to be there. Yeah, I'm um, going to be there. Okay. Uh, my, my only question is, can we recount the, the paper ballots? That's what we are recounting. Okay, great. The words absentee paper ballots are what we're recounting. We are not recounting the the official version from the state. The state says this is the certified, we certified it today. It's been done. The state's not going to do anything else for us. They have done everything that they correct. They run the number. They ran their numbers twice, and they agree with one another. So, um, so you're not recounting any of the local votes. No, we're, machine, machine. The 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 poll station votes that were done by the Sussex County uh, voting machines. Right. That's what you got right there. And we don't count those. They tally those for us. They supply us with a report, and they have run their numbers twice and supplied us with their report. We, yeah. So the, re, the recounting process, and this is confirmed with, with assistance from that office, is that it's relegated to the aspect of the election that we have total control over, which was the absentee uh, voting process. That's where our hands touch them. As far as, and I think that, just to clarify this, because I know that you wanted clarity on this as well, is, is that the process with the, the, um, the state is they come in with these machines. They're kept locked in this room, and then the morning of the polls, they, when the inspector's there, when the judges are there, the other judge is a man named Stephen Eckerman, he's not here, and the, the board, I mean, the election board, they unlock the machines, they show that on the computer, all of your names are on that, okay? Yep. But let me finish, okay. and it's, it's zeroed out, okay? So it's a zero, and, and we can, we'll give you a copy of those strips as well. At the end of the election, when they close them, they run a tape, and they show how many votes each person got. It shows how many people actually voted in that machine. Those ballots go into a locked box, okay, that nobody can touch because we can't touch them. We haven't seen them. We had we nothing. We just get this strip. So those are over in Sussex County. Then they go back, and the official validation or certification happens when they run them again, and they do a second run to make sure that there was no mistakes. And then they send us, as they did this morning, uh, so that we can do a certified election result, and they matched what they gave us on Saturday. Okay, so um, I still think that the, given that the paper ballots are available, they should be counted. Um, the other thing is... Um, That's something he has to take up with the states. They're not, yeah. they're not in our possession? 
They're not in our possession. I don't yeah. have them. Yeah, they, well, I understand. You yeah. said that. We don't have them. The town doesn't have them. That's something you'd have to take up with. Uh, well, they, they, what they've indicated to me is that they have uh, completed their process of confirming their results, and that includes. Um, but that's not a recount. Well, I, I, that's the exact that's question I asked. What does it mean? What is your what is your role in this? And they're they're telling us that they run their numbers twice, and they agree. And this is this is what we have to go with. So when would, in your estimation, the clock of seven days start ticking after certification or after the date of the election? So I need to know how much time I have. Okay, the seven day um, period you're talking about is which period? Uh, the seven days before someone can be seated. Since the election isn't certified now, I don't see how you start the clock running. It'll be certified. It'll be, it, it, the, the clock will start running when, when, this, when this board certifies the election results. Okay. That's when the seven days start Great. running. That's what I want to know. Thank you. All right. So, sure, go ahead. <clears throat> Dennis Trencher, I was a challenger for uh, Phil Rowe. I have a question. Uh, I was there for the count. <laughs> I feel pretty good about that, though. And, but before the count, I wasn't there the day before. Sometimes you put off uh, uh, write-ins because it's not acceptable for whatever reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, are you going to look at them again? What, 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 what are you referring to the ones that were not sealed? Correct, things like that. Will you be you looking at the... Count, uh, if it's not sealed, you can't count it. No, that's, in, that's in the code. Okay, I think that's what he's that's talking that's about. What he's talking about... He's talking about write-ins? He's talking about... I think what he's talking about <coughs> is, is that... Which you... You know, we can't go back in time. You could have been there because you were offered to be there. Those were open meetings. I didn't, get, I didn't get the right. Yeah, but okay. the, um, he's talking about opening the white envelopes before, like, did we not count any of opening the white envelopes? And the only thing that we do is when we open up those white envelopes is we look to make sure that the, the this color, whatever that is, mm -hmm. the ballot, the extra that is put in is, is um, uh, signed, you know, Taken, done correctly, and then we um, uh, put it aside. We don't open up the ballots until the envelope ballot until you all are there. I don't remember if there was any, but if there was, any rejected are in a uh, an envelope locked up in the um, the office, and I don't remember if there was any reject. I don't. Do you do you remember? Do you were you? Did we reject any she on no, that day? You weren't yes. there. The other board. We did. And, we did reject a few of the brown envelopes because they were not sealed the day that you were there. And we saw that. Right. I don't remember if there were any point ones. I just say this because I, I was a challenger before for Dale, and there were some they put on the side. They said, "We'll look at, if it's a close election. We'll look at it." But it wasn't a close election. Well, yeah. And we don't. We always look at all of them, whether it's close or not. If there's anything that has to be decided, the board decides that. Okay. And then decides whether it meets the code, and then we accept it, or it doesn't. Okay. And we reject it. But no, we, that is a process that is used. Okay, thank you. I think... I think, to, to be clear, nothing is rejected the day of um, the day that we open up the white envelopes, Beverly could Beverly was there. The all of the ballots are put into the box to be looked at uh, when the official counting is going on. It's a clerical process on Thursday and Friday. It's not a process of of opening them up or rejecting. Only reject the only rejections because I had to think back at this and please I do want Beverly to speak to that as well because she was the uh, I I was following her this year so um, those things once the once the white envelopes are open which when we say the white envelopes the mailbacks basically those are and those are open there is a locked box and the official ballot is stuck in that ballot to be counted or decided whether or not to be not to be counted the day of the election is that correct Be Beverly yes okay yeah so all everything that was I think 
I think Diane was there too, and I think she was one of your uh, people as well, but you were the first person. But I think you were covered the whole time to see everything that went on. Mr. Rowe, I just want you to know that. Your, your uh, challengers were there the whole time. And I think yours too, Paul. Iris was there the whole time and saw anything that was rejected and why. Okay, um, so what I'd like to do, if we can do this now, is, um, and unless I miss something, is just agree on a time that we come back and start this process again to vote. And so what you'll be doing, we have some more business, but what you'll be doing is recessing today's meeting mm -hmm. until a certain hour. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and then gathering when you can to yes. do the recap. And going over and getting the stuff ready over and mm -hmm. uh, arranging for us to, to do it. Yeah, we'll be doing it in the lifeguard station. Where is the agenda? What else? What other business do we have? Well, I want to talk agenda? about this this challenge. Okay. As so, well. Go ahead. So okay. can we at, like at least right now decide what time we're coming back? That everybody's available to come back. Personally, I would like to do it as soon as possible since yes. we're all here. Yeah. You know, adjourn, go get it, and come back. If yeah. that works fast. <laughs> mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. All right. There's. Okay. I do not know if the other tallier, but I think he'll make time. Uh, I just have to ask the other tallier if he'll come back. He'll do it. I'll make him do it. <laughs> but. Uh, if the other tallier is not available, because we do have the two, you two will be just overseeing it as well as here, and uh, I'm sure it can. What could we do? One o'clock is one. I know, but I still have to go. Well, I still have to go over and get all of the stuff and bring it back. And uh, what time would you all like to do it? I'd like to do it at noon. All right. Just because it's noon. Is noon okay? Noon's okay. Noon? Noon? Okay, so I guess uh, seconds, uh, first noon, or how does it go? Uh, I, I um, move that we meet again to recount at noon today. A second. I second. <laughs> we, are the, we have a quorum because it's just you and I, mm -hmm. uh, and there's only three people, so right. we can... Do it. So noon. Is that fine, Fred? Um, I I don't. Know. Do you anticipate me being here? <coughs> like, that's fine. Yeah. As far as as far as the law is concerned, certainly that's fine. I mean, I'll be I'll be available to run over here if there's any need for that. Okay. So um, so that that is taken care of. And should we go over one more time the steps? Or do we need to go to the steps? It's exactly the way the steps were before all the challengers. And the challengers need to be sent to us right away just to let us know who you want to be your challengers. Um, you can send that in an email. You all have my email. All right, so Fred, go, go ahead. What else do we need to talk okay, about? Okay, so we have, we have a complaint um, here in writing. We don't need to go over the, the certainly not the merits of it. We don't need to to discuss it at all at this point, but I think we've acknowledged receipt of a complaint filed by one of the candidates, which triggers the application of Section 7552, a complaint procedure. Um, I believe the complaint relates to the, the manner in which the um, ballots were uh, labeled or constructed or the, the language used on them, and I believe that would be a complaint regarding pre-election pre activity, not, um, not activity that occurred on election day necessarily, but the activity that preceded that. I think we have, um, we have 10 days, this group has 10 days to resolve a complaint such as this, um, which requires us to do our best to comply with the Freedom of Information Act, which requires us to give seven days notice, um, but does acknowledge that, that we must hold the meeting within 10 days of the complaint. So um, I think we're justified in scheduling another meeting of this group later on in this week. Um, I'm hopeful that we can get the group together, but that would be an opportunity for Mr. Rowe or his representatives to state his case to this board. Um, and uh, this board is going to have a decision to make. I'll be attempting to prepare you uh, for what your options are 
and what standards apply. Of course, we're really moving fast on this, faster than, than any of us are super comfortable with given the lack of experience, but we're gonna get it done. If either party or if um, any candidate feels aggrieved by the decision of this board, uh, they would have a right to appeal that to the State Elections Commissioner's Office. And uh, that, would, um, that would involve another hearing. Um, and subsequent to that, a right of appeal to state court would, would exist. So we've got to hold this hearing um, within 10 days, and I would urge us to try and pick a date uh, towards the end of this week, perhaps Friday morning or something. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Um, it can, I can't do Thursday or Friday. I can't do Thursday or Friday. Well, it doesn't matter for you. The only people that it matters is is uh, is Gloria and Marty. I mean, I'm going on vacation. No, it doesn't. We're the people oh, on board. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, so if she can do Thursday. I will stay down here till Thursday so we can make that decision. The only people that can vote on that are the, the board members. We'll see if we can get Gloria, but we will have a quorum. Mm -hmm. um, could you see if you could, uh, Beverly, if you could text Gloria and see if she could make Thursday? What time? I can do any time. Well, Mr. Rowe. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Because <laughs> you could... Schedule it when you know you're going to have it. I may want counsel, so I'd like to have time. Well, our code says 10 days, okay. not not less than 10 days. Right. And there's, there's a desire, of course, um, that uh, you be given due process. But there's also a desire that the commission, that the council be fully installed so it can do business and is not, uh, you know, not handicapped by the by the process. So um, uh, this is the state code we're applying. So I would urge you to do what you need to do, um, recognizing that I think you have a duty to make your case here in good faith. This could or could not be your last bite of the apple um, as well so <laughs> yes sir does this entail or need the presence of any of the other candidates at the meeting or does it does it affect the election of any of the other candidates um, I, I believe that this is a question for um, mr. Rowe to put to this group um, and this group has to decide whether any um, um, whether there was an irregularity having to do with an election official that had um, a bearing on the outcome. Um, I, I don't see anyone else having any standing to. Um, and perhaps I'm going to I'm going to have to examine this question. I, I, ideally, we wouldn't have public comment. State, you know. Freedom of Information Act may apply in such a way that we have to allow for public comment. Um, but I don't think, for instance, you ran in this, you were a candidate in this election, I don't think you're a party to the appeal. I don't think um, even Mr. Bauer is a party to the appeal. Uh, but those are questions we're going to have to answer. Yeah, because the only reason I ask is because I now have something on Thursday too, although I'd rather be here. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't think you um, are, again, a party to this process the question is whether you would the question is just whether you would have a, a right to speak and we'll be answering that uh, question at, um, on a public notice that we publish mm -hmm. um, as far as when we do the the recount we just need to have and this is up to Ashley we have to have a list of a printout for the um, of the voters, both uh, merging, uh, and we have to have that by, uh, can you get that by 12, do you think? Okay, so to hand out to whoever comes. Um, that will not, all we will be doing is, you'll have that for your challengers, as you did the other day, but we will just be counting. 
Um, okay. I just, okay, did you have a question? I do. If, you have to, at uh, the, uh, the microphone. Mm -hmm. Pat Wright, former mayor. Mm -hmm. If you were delayed with uh, the, new, the new winners, will it continue as the same until that time, such as TJ being mayor and Paul is on, and they are still on commission, until you make this decision. Yes, they're, they would serve in holdover capacity until the, the new group is organized. Uh, um, yes. Is there any other business? So what time is, are we setting for Thursday? Oh, Thursday, sorry. Thank you. I can do any time. Phil, um, I'll give you, you and you two the option to coordinate what time on Thursday, Bill and Fred? Can we set a time? And yes. Paul, I'm sure you want to be here. Yes. Paul, do you have a time and Phil and it doesn't matter, okay. Fred, will you be with us? I will and uh, yeah. Is there a time that works then for you? I'm, I'm wide open. Okay, what time? 11. Okay, 11 o'clock then on Thursday, the 26th of September. Um, we will have the appeal by the candidates. Is it free? Yeah, lifeguard station. It, is, that, is that the case? It's available to us? Okay. This group will deliberate in public and issue a, a um, verbal, uh, they'll announce their decision, uh, but a written decision will follow within 24 hours of that, uh, of that hearing. 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock actually, okay. Okay. Um, so for the recount, you will be here, Ellen. Just you will be here. I'll get Rick, and I have to let him know. If uh, if for some reason Rick can't make it, could you possibly be the tallyer? Yeah, well, let me know so I can cancel my one o'clock appointment. Okay. Um, well, I have to. I mean, like, I feel strange to be like stopping a meeting to call somebody. But is that all right to do that? Under these circumstances, I think all rules of Okay. Customs are have to be pushed aside. already that um, were approved by the council. So um, I think that's all there is, Fred. There's another question for Mr. Oh, Rowe sorry. and maybe one behind him. Question for Fred. Uh, up with this, please. I'm sorry. You need to come upstairs. Or come up here. Upstairs. <laughs> Quoting from that's Delaware State Law? Yes, seven, um, 7552. Okay. Um, chapter 15, or Title 15. Title 15, 7552. Mm -hmm. Okay. Come on up. Natalie Gates, West Street, former commissioner. Uh, is this uh, item that's being discussed for 11 o'clock Thursday, is that a, will that be publicly noticed? Is that a Public meeting? Yes, it will be a public meeting and it will be publicly noticed and it um, will, uh, there'll be a justification listed for why we couldn't give seven days notice and I think uh, the code actually acknowledges that to the extent possible you will give uh, proper notice 
uh, of such a proceeding, but uh, by saying that, that suggests that, you, that if you can't do it, then you can schedule one in less than seven days. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I have one question. Do we give the actual uh, list of who voted or do we give the who's registered to vote votes? We gave who's registered to vote for the challengers. Um, if we have the information uh, indicating who voted, okay. then that information can be given. We're not giving out any phone numbers or any birth dates. Um, so if we have that information available to us in just name form, then we will supply it. Okay. And if we don't, then we have to purge at least that much information and maybe more. It sounds like we, we have it in that fashion. Okay. Uh, so the I'd like to adjourn the meeting. Uh, recess until recess the, we oh, sorry, recess it. until uh, noon. And um, is that it? So. All right. So. You don't need you. I don't need you. Okay. okay.